All right, this is a test to see if anyone who's watching right now can hear us all. Check, check. Need one yes in the chat. Cool. So, um, okay. So, uh, the way this is going to work tonight, to anyone watching, is these are the four guests joining me tonight. Uh, they're just going to introduce themselves. One of us from the Patreon submissions, they couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately. So, maybe they can watch this a little later. But uh, these four gentlemen are part of my Patreon and they entered the Legend of Dragon Ball uh, fan art contest. And their work, I just wanted to go over tonight. So, uh, for those of you who are watching, the idea tonight isn't like to say, um, oh, here's how you do it. Here's a, this is better. Redraw, redraw. It's, it's nothing like that. What it is, is think about like, if you're trying to get into an animation or if you're working for another client, like you can be good at what you do, but now you have to be good at what someone else wants. So, um, you know, it's very easy to make good work better. It's very difficult to start something from nothing and get anywhere with it. So, People like me, people like other animators in studios, they could do fantastic work. They hand it to the director. The director says, 70% uh, of this is good, 30% of it I need redone. Not because it's bad, but just because it's not what's in my head. So that's what we're doing here, that 30%. What's in my head versus what's what you're giving me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that all the art that you guys submitted were for me. It was I asked you for something, and now a portion of it, that 30%, is what didn't uh, align with what's in my mind. So does that sound good guys? Yeah, cool. So uh, just so everyone watching knows uh, you want to quickly introduce yourselves. Uh, we'll start with Alex. Uh, my, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm Vietnamese. I live in Ireland and I'm currently in Vietnam on vacation. Uh, I'm 17 years old and I want to be an animator when I grow up. Very cool. Dan, you're next. Uh, my name is Dan. Um, and I love, I just draw for the mastery, um, favorite, favorite artist of all time, uh, Kinu Nishimura, uh, one of the artists from Capcom SNK, and, um, my goal is just to be good at that art and just enjoy. Nice. Good reason. Sean? Yep. My name is Sean Bryant. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Philadelphia. And I graduated from New University of Arts, and I am inspired to make video games from Oxen. Very cool. And Jaheem. Um, hi, my name is Jaheem Campbell, and my, my current goal is to get into Seneca College and to become a better digital animator, along with learning how to do traditional animation and hopefully work for either an animation studio or um, Nintendo um, specifically. Very nice. Good uh, focused goals. So uh, glad everyone is here tonight. So gonna switch my screen. We're not, you guys aren't gonna be seeing us anymore for the rest of the night. We're just gonna switch my screen to my Photoshop and uh, we'll get it started. So let me just slide this over and let me pop up the uh, Photoshop file. So before we get into it, guys in the ch uh, in our call, uh, you excited? Is this the kind of things you want to do? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Good. good. Very All right. Yeah. All right. Very happy to be here. Um, <laughs> we got okay. So the one who didn't get to join us tonight is Luke Thompson. So I'm still gonna go over his work today too. So I'm just gonna do this in the order I see our names in the chat. So there's Alex. I'm gonna start with yours. So. All right, so let's first look at what we got. So we got a classic uh, recreation of that scene in the film where Goku goes Bleh, and he turns around and you know he's just ready to direct shop, right? So first of all, like <clears throat> I can see what you're doing with this. So got a, a full body, oh, next to a full body pose, which is not how it was fielded in the original. So I'm glad you extended that. Um, tail's coming out of the wrong spot, so we're gonna have to fix that up. And um, also, uh, yeah, I think for yours. Uh, I can tell like what you're trying to do with this like there's like a level of intensity that you're uh, achieving with this but uh, I think there are just some really uh, basic anatomy things that we can just tweak and it'll start like juicing up your pose a lot so for yours I think we're going to focus on pose does that sound good yeah that sounds good yeah cool so before we jump into it I mean 
as we jump into it, just feel free to just stop me anytime if you have any questions. And um, I mean, if any of you do have like the chat open, I'm always looking down at the, the screen. If you have the chat open and you um, just notice a question that pertains to like what you're doing, uh, feel free to just like let me know what it is and I can maybe answer it while drawing. Okay, let me get my nice animator blue. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's just look at this a bit. So we got uh, a twisted pose. Uh, we got like a lot of action with this back over here and the legs. So I'll give you like a, a really quick tip. So you ever do like, um, have you ever like looked in mirror for like a reference, like for your hands or like for like a facial expression and this sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, I've used it for like hands and yeah. Like so, limbs. so you'll notice though, like when you like look in the mirror, there's like going to be like a limit to how much you can turn your head. So that's like one of the first things I'll say. So like, if we think about like, just like a head from top down view, if these are the shoulders and like, that's the head, like maybe you're actually going to only be able to turn your head profile. Like some people can't even go that far because like maybe they're like a bit stiff in the neck or something. So when we think of this, if we think of a camera, if this is Goku from top view, if the camera was behind him, I think we could agree the camera's over here, right? Yeah. And uh, so, wait, sorry, let me just alt tab something here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's where the camera would be. So when he turns around, if he turns his head, let's get rid of this one for a second. If he turned his head, we get like this little face of him that's gonna be on this camera. But what we actually have here is his head turning further beyond what it should like humanly. I know he's not a human, but like it's turning further beyond what it should actually be able to do. Because if we eliminate this arm, what we can think about is the neck, the body without the arms. It's not far off, but it is a little off. So like, let's attack that place first. So. I'm gonna, I, I like to not start with the most interesting place, which is the face. Everyone wants a good face in their drawing, you know? So why don't we start somewhere else? Because if we don't have a good body, no point of drawing a good face. Because it all gets wasted anyway, right? So let's draw his body. So if this is like a center line, so say that's his spine, plus his muscles and stuff like that. Uh, if we just keep taking this up, pretending he's not looking at us, would you agree maybe this looks like him looking away from us. I would say so. And uh, you know what I mean? Like this would be his eyes, this would be his ears. Maybe we got like a bit of his nose there. If this was like base Goku, like maybe his hair would be like this. You know what I mean? Let's just get rid of all that. So when we turn this head, we're thinking yeah. of this. We're thinking of this head turning to us. So I'm just gonna like loosely leave some of that next stuff here. Let me just erase this. It takes faster to just erase this than it is to try to undo this. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep the base of this neck here. But I'm gonna start thinking about like the muscles twisting a little bit. So near your ear. You're gonna learn this when you start learning a lot of anatomy, but the muscles that go up to the back of your ear, it's called like your sternocleidal mastoid. It goes from this this mastoid process down to your sternum and it has a limit to how much it can twist you know uh, people who are watching this on stream you can't see me doing this because my OBS won't allow that uh, a zoom call on that at the same time but uh, the muscle that I'm referring to is this muscle that goes behind your ear here and it goes to your neck uh, your sternum if you really like are jacked like you're gonna see this everyone sees that when they think of a character like it's always that muscle right there right but that goes right to the back to what's called your mastoid process and that's the thing that we want to always be aware of when we turn ahead what is the extent that the mastoid process is going to be moving so our actual limit if he's looking over his shoulder it would be something like that it's not crazy different from yours, if you think about it. I mean, I did shift it over as a result of his body posture, but if we even just bring this over to where yours was, like, 
I guess not that different, right? Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Like, you can make really minor changes to some of your stuff, and it'll start increasing the overall quality. So, like, let's get rid of some of this stuff. And, yeah, so we actually figured out the hardest part of the drawing. It's the head turn. Mm -hmm. And then you can figure out the rest. We have an insertion point here for the arm. It's got to go somewhere. You have him with his hands actually in front of him, right? So let's do that too. I like to sometimes, instead of drawing the wrist right after, I'll just draw what I want at the end. It's got to connect back somehow, right? So that's one way you can figure out your foreshortening. And then right now it looks like he's checking his nails, like he just got them done. So let's do some reposing for this. So I, I think you want to add like a little bit of intensity to his hands, right? So yeah. go, go get a mirror, open it up and look at your hand from different angles or just open your hand and stare at it. Think about it, open like this. Think about how, how wide the thumb is going out. Think about these fingers coming out this way and like what happens to a pinky when it, it stretches out too is a really tricky thing. And it's not in the right place that I want it right now. And I'm not gonna rotate it, I'm just gonna draw it again. The rotation is for losers, okay? <laughs> That's like, um, but yeah, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like so you can you can add like a little bit of intensity here and there in your in your pose. Uh, maybe sneak in a little bit of this elbow, and then you know even people who stand straight, standing completely straight, you can get opposing curves, where like something goes this way, something goes this way, but the overall look of it still looks straight to you. So that's kind of what's going on in his back now. We have like this curve here, but to offset it, instead of just imagining like his pelvis is here and his legs are here which looks like he's falling backwards or taking a step. What you can do is this curve went this way. So now we can make the other curve go this way. So if you just imagine the spine just kept going out, it would be something like that. And like, to me, like honestly, like that still looks pretty standing straight. You know what I mean? And then you can like start filling it with the other detail you want. Uh, just a little detail thing. So if this was like an animation and this was one frame of it, I would, this is called like a model check now. So it has nothing to do with like how anatomically good the drawing is. Now we have to think the model. Think of a Goku shirt. The inside layer is blue. Outside layer is orange and it's getting kind of stuffy. So like this would have to go like a little higher. And then underneath all that, somewhere in his, on his spine is going to be the insertion of his tail. So I have that ripped out of the the fabric, and then I would continue with what you had here with like your tail and stuff. Probably make these pants a little baggy or something. And uh, those are like minor things. Every area, just minor, 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 that we can start just addressing, and it'll lead us to a version of the same drawing, but just, you know, different. And uh, it, for our reason, we're trying to improve the drawing, so this will be like our quote unquote better version of the drawing where I'm taking the intention that you had, and I'm just trying to juice up the intention. I'm not trying to change what it is. I'm not saying, oh, now I want his arms crossed. Now I want him looking the other way. I'm trying to do what you did, but now just improve upon what you have. So, so yeah, so let's uh, just kind of do like a before after sort of thing. So we have the intention, the twisted body, looking to camera, hands to, supposed to have a bit of intensity in them. And then we turn this back on. The hands need some work, but that's kind of like a first pass. Um, yeah, so not totally different. And if you worked on something that way, I think that'd be like the way to go. Let's just before before we end up this, uh, off of this post, want to give this hand a little bit of a, a treatment. It's going to delete all this. And then it's going to freestyle it. And if it was me, like if I would actually have probably drawn his hand out uh, this way. And then maybe like, I don't know, like if he's like really getting ready to do something, maybe have his other hand sneaking over here. Kind of like, it's just, you know, he's a game where he's like just rip into you. So I think that would be pretty sweet. We have placeholders here.
yeah, obviously not going to finish this old run. But, um, but yeah, what do you think? Is that helpful? Alex? Yeah? Sorry, do, do you find that helpful? Is there anything else you really wanted to yeah, yeah, yeah. know about that? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's actually it's, it's really... Um, yeah. This is my question. Yeah. Um, are the rest of us supposed to be able to see what you're doing? Are you not able to see what I'm doing? Uh, no. Wait, are you... Do you have my YouTube um, open? Uh, oh, wait, I'm supposed to have it open? Yeah, but just put it on mute so you don't get, like, a feedback loop. Um, oh, that's right, unfortunate okay. that you can see any of that. <laughs> you can watch it back later. <laughs> um, is that the same uh, issue anyone else had? No, I'm good. Uh, so I'll I'll, I've been that. watching it on the YouTube on the side. Oh, you've been you've been keeping Jaheem in the dark. Never mind. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah. So each of these little drawovers, I'm gonna send it your guys okay. away if you want to look at it later. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So that is Alex's. I'm gonna start a new one up. So let's see. What we got next. We got Dan. So Dan had some cool stuff here that I'm just gonna share. So he had like a like a four page or four or five page comic. Uh, it's five pages. So it was like a recreation of the scene and people are actually smart enough to run away this time. Unlike in my film where everyone dies. And then this is actually basically the same scene that Alex had. His wicked action pose here that I'm not touching because if I was asking for this, this is probably similar to what I would have wanted. And then we have this alternate scene where like something shows up at the Budokai and Broly's like what? He's like slammed into the ground and it's Akuma just ready to uh, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, so let's see what we want to look at. So uh, I really like that pose so I don't want to really try to improve that one. It has a lot of good twists in it. The head angle is like really well grounded. So let's uh, move on from there. Um, this would be an interesting one to do because this is such an iconic pose. And you've, we feel like we've seen it, like how many times have we seen Akuma's pose, right? But mm -hmm. but it always looks like a little bit different depending on the artist who draws it. Um, mm -hmm. This would be, this is another one, this is an iconic one, his shosh pose and like this one is pretty nice. Um, but you know, just because this one's such a like standing static pose, it makes it harder to deal with. So let's uh, let's try that one. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right, so pop that in there. Whoa, that's so small. <laughs> Hold on, that uh, can't be right. <laughs> um, open with. Okay, cool. Um, and just before you do that, I just wanted to check the chat to see if there's anything that I'm able to answer to anybody. Um, yeah, I think people are just following along, so that's cool. All right. Uh, here we go. All right, so for yours, uh, our challenge here is to think of a way to make a static pose really sing. Yours is in a good spot because the anatomy is uh, looking really solid. The proportions are looking really solid. I'm just going to toss this into the middle. I'm actually going to imagine we had the rest of the pose there. And you could crop it any way you want and cut it off dramatically how you do right now. But uh, it'd be easier to work with it. So. Yours, I think, is going to be a combination of a matter of perspective and then also just thinking about, like, atmospherically, what could you add to a drawing to make it just a little bit different, you know? So, by the way, our Zoom call is going to end in 10 minutes, so um, I'm just going to make a new link. Uh, it gives you, like, a limit on how much you can talk. So give me one second. Wow. I'm going to send to your emails uh, the invite for the, the rest of this, okay? So let's oh, dissolve yeah. this conversation and just look out for it. Uh, all right. All right. So, see you soon. Uh, whoops. Okay. So, I'm just gonna invite everyone to this. There we go. Just bear with me here for a second. They'll be here in a moment.
Got a lot of Spanish speaking fans in the audience tonight. That's pretty cool. I always like when Spanish people like Dragon Ball Z, they take it seriously. <laughs> so cool. Okay, so we got Sean and Alex back in here. Uh, Dan. Just waiting on Jaheim. Also, I just want to let you know I can still hear you. You can still hear me, right? Good. Yes. Good, good. My, my, I just want to say my video is probably going to be off because the internet is kind of bad right now. Yeah, as long as your mic's still available, it's yeah. good. And uh, yeah, again, feel free to like, even if it's not the drawing that you did, if you have questions about how I'm doing it, just chime in. And there is Jaheem. All right, cool. So just give him a second to join up. Jaheem, you can hear us, right? Yeah. Good, good. Okay, so I'm going to start on Dan's one here. Uh, okay, so our challenge is how do we make something static look a little bit more dynamic without ruining the integrity of its static nature? So for me, there's a few things. So one, I'm just going to do like a little bit of a perspective change. So you have like your, your floor, whoops, a little big. Uh, you have your floor plane coming like this, which means it's probably like the horizon line is probably somewhere around here. And... Uh, but our feet, they still look like they're on a flat plane. So that'd be like the first thing I actually attack. Um, oh, sorry, I did that on the wrong layer. Let me just get one layer here. It's a little small. There we go. All right. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the perspective of the feet based off of how you set it up. So I would actually probably draw just a small change like that. Just so we know, like, the feet are actually moving forward in perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's the first thing I would do. But I'm actually not going to keep that there because there's something else that I want to do with this drawing. So Akuma just arrived here, you know? He smashed Broly into the ground of smoke, debris, dust, kind of clearing. But what we have here is an instance of that, right? Somebody took a snapshot of that moment in the tournament. So one thing you could do to like juice this up is actually add like particles of like stuff. Like maybe there's still like little rock debris falling or something, you know? Maybe we do get like light, like on a low opacity. I mean, it's obviously full opacity for me, but maybe we get some like light smoke kind of like drifting past Broly or something like that, like just revealing off his body. Yeah. That could be kind of so nice. Obvious, kinda. And like already that's, it's making it a little bit more thematic, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now the next thing I would do is his back. Akuma is just so jacked, right? So what it would what would it be like if we took this body that and this is a gi on top of a body so i'm actually imagining your body looks a little bit more like that you know so what would it be like if we took this back and just really like juiced it up like something like this and then we put his arms out here still going to where you want it to go but like, it's like he has to make room for his arms now because his back is so big, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And like the, the, the trick that I'm doing is I'm making the arm go out more this way, but I'm still letting it come back to where you're trying to get it going. So like now we're actually keeping the integrity of the original, but we're also like just kind of amping it up in a way too. And then we can go with like the cloth. Now your cloth is your best friend in the scene. You know, if he's not moving, but his cloth is, you have like your Kurosawa moment there. So what if like, if you look at your original here, one, two, three, one, two, three, up, up, down, up, down, down. You have a little bit of variance there, but what if we like really messed with it a little bit where these are natural tears in his clothes, right? Like what if they're like moving like a little bit more in the direction of the wind? Oh yeah. Now we're gonna do this like full body. So I'm just gonna, raise this gi up a little bit more I 
think that'll play to our to the strengths of the drawing so far. So next, um, I'm just gonna sneak in ahead there too, because you got your beads. feel the anger from his neck <laughs> you know what I mean um, yeah okay cool so this is where we're at so far and just like the fabric from before we can do the same thing on this what's close to us and what's far from us so that one's far from us maybe there's like a division in the fabric and maybe get some folds there keeping the belt that you have and then on the other side, there's the rest of that belt, right? So maybe we could sneak in some of that. Like the, he's got like the tattered rope belt. So maybe like it goes like something like that. And now let's juice up his ass, man. <laughs> like let's let's, uh, let's add some like folds here. Let's uh, just you know like a leg. It's very simple to draw a leg like this, right? But what if we like really like just play with the proportions and just like kind of get offsets and stuff? So we have a fabric that's supposed to be pretty baggy, right? And now it's being affected by wind. And you know, Akuma looks really good with like, it's like two, it's like he's wearing like short pants, you know, like they don't, they don't even like fit in properly anymore because they're like cut off so like low at the, at the ankles. So like, I think we could use that actually to our benefit to like, just make him look cool. Like I, I, I like how it looks. Yeah. And the word twin, what we call like twinning, is something in animation where we try not to create on one side what we do on the other. Though we both have rips, though they're both moving, the shapes that we're creating here aren't the same. I didn't draw this line the same place I drew this line. I didn't draw this fold the same place I drew that fold. You know, like, so there's little places where you can find places to just make little imbalances. That's a, a really great thing when it comes to static stuff, especially, or symmetrical stuff. So think about that. Now we're going to go back to that grounded feet thing that I was talking about, where we're just going to follow the perspective a little bit more. And uh, come has got sandals. It's leg day, Ryu. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep it like that. Uh, and then, yeah, so I, I like how you did the hands, but I'm going to do one last thing to really, like, increase the intensity in hands. You One thing that you want to do for, like, very, like, masculine, like, muscular poses, when you have, like, say, like, a, like a bicep and an arm, this is what you don't want to do. And that's, like, exaggerated. But you see how, like, this wrist is bent? This is the thumb. What you want to do instead is you either want it straight or really like popped in. But like now it's actually like bent. It's, it's like so straight that it's getting bent now. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So you can do yeah. the same thing when you are going straight down. So right now, because of the way I drew this on the edit, this hand is now almost popping out this way. So I'm just gonna like reinforce what you already have there, but just like push it just a little bit more in that way. And then same deal on this side. And yeah, it's not perfect, but like it's a good starting point. Yeah. So I know this looks like quite different, but like micro micro editing it right we start with like a bigger back we start with a grounded foot we pop the arms out a little bit more but bring them back to the place they're trying to go we add a little bit of wind debris and that sort of stuff so it'll take you from something like that to like something like that and then if you really want to be like dramatic with it maybe we can add some like really like spot dramatic lighting Uh, so simple. <laughs> yeah, like you can do like a lot of simple, small things to a drawing to make it like read a lot differently. 
Yeah. And that and that's what it comes down to where like it's not about like, hey, how am I supposed to draw this better? It's like what can I add to this to just reinforce what I'm already trying to do? You're trying to go for a static pose, you know? You're not trying to like be all flashy action posey with this. But like what can you do to a static pose to like make it like not necessarily more static, but like just something else to just read a little bit more thematically because you have a very thematic scene here, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just for fun. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> da, ha, no chikara. <laughs> okay, so, you good? Yeah, it was good. Okay, good. All right, so that one's for Dan. Yeah, so the other one was here for uh, Alex. Cool, got Dan's. And then we're going to get another one going. So let's pop that up. Yeah. All right. So the next one will be Sean's. All right. So Sean, you sent me some other stuff. Um, to, we won't have enough time to look at it tonight because we're going to be wrapping up by 1030. But we'll start with this. And maybe there's some other times if we have, ever do one of these again, like we can like look at it. But I can at least give you some like written feedback on some of the stuff you sent me. So, um, but yeah, so Sean did this dope one, if people remember, of like this, like, ancient warrior Goku. While I'm just, like, setting up my layers here, do you want to just explain to people listening, like, what your idea was behind this? Uh, yeah, when I saw your fan animation that you made for Legend of Dragon Ball Tale, my idea was to, you know, come up with an idea when I saw from your fan animation. I want to make this Goku into, like, Super Saiyan Rage. Mm-hmm. And I call this Super Saiyan Rage and more and more like he's like in control of that form. Like when I saw your animation, like I want to like come up with the idea what he would look like in control of his rage, Super Saiyan and ancient samurai armor. So, so I'm just this is like a master to Goku. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome, so, man. Yes, I can see like the metal plating and you got like these like almost like Oni style boots, some sort of like dragging cannon staff. You got like the the core just going out of control and it almost looks like he has like a warrior's mask on top of his like something like scorpion and a really cool idea with like the tail like how you lit it and stuff like i couldn't tell if like that was like generated or you just painted it that way it's just a I bit... painted it. and yeah then, uh, i had smoke um an image oh like a smoke texture and like change the yes, color and stuff right okay so yeah. that i think that's what made it look a little bit like v effecty um but good work man like it's really cool so yeah. f for you I think what'll benefit you, it's not like an idea thing. I think for you, it's like more of like um, pose. So let's see what we can do for yours uh, to juice up the pose a little bit while staying true to the intent of your drawing. So, so first thing is, I think uh, proportion wise, I do think his legs are maybe a little short. So uh, I'll tell you why, because like typically for like a very, like a template uh, basic body, we have, whoops. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, so for like a, a really template body, if we have like your proportions like this, typically the space between your pubic bone and your heels is essentially the same space between here to like your head. But like, it's not exactly like that, but it is kind of like that. Because if you think about like, if you bent down and then if you were just able to keep bending, like eventually your head's like over here, but then your arms will come down like that or something, right? So it is pretty close. Your your knees, you if you bend up your knees, they'll usually go up to about like maybe your sternum like that. So that's something we can just keep in mind going forward. So for what I'm seeing here, it feels like abs, abs, pubic bone, like side of the pelvis and stuff. So maybe the pubic bone's around. Ah, uh, that might be a little low. Maybe it's actually like around here. And then what I'm seeing is like the legs like that. But these legs, they feel like maybe a bit short for him. So, and that's not a wrong thing. But what it is, is it's selling a different type of proportion. Because think about like orcs and like warriors and stuff like that. Like sometimes they're pur they're purposely like designed that way. Like they're imbalanced on, on purpose. You know what I mean? It gives a different feel. Um, 
that for me like that stubby feel is like associated with like a bane type character or broly or like something really big and jank like uh like not janky but you know what i mean like big and bulky right so um are you actually trying to go for something a little bit more like that or uh is it just like oh you would actually want to do like a little bit like longer legs um for this one um i kind of um mess up the style of the legs like when you look at like when you look at the part that um the knee part mm -hmm. um on the goku's leg like i didn't like try to make the knees look that low i see what you're saying so yeah mm -hmm. okay so i think yeah it's just a basic proportion thing so that'll probably be the first thing we attack so let's do that so if we're just gonna look at like raw construction got like his abs and stuff and that'll lead like into his pelvis and then I'd say his knees are probably around there and then eventually like his legs go like up to there so you just be like slightly yes. taller yes. we're not looking at too much space there right so that'll be our base but that's not what we're actually going to draw here um what i want to suggest is you see how like on dan's we took a stiff pose but we added things to it like around it to just kind of juice it up we're going to do like something similar to yours where like you have a straight standing pose but what i am getting is something straight do you ever see like girls and I, I, I mentioned girls because I see it more in girls like their arms are so straight that it hyperextends and then like you get like if you get like a if a girl's like balancing like this on the on a table you'll get something actually that ends up looking like this it, it looks weird when you think about it like that but it's true like you, you you see it in people's arms you see it in like people's legs where it's not just a straight leg actually what you get is uh, you get something like this, you know, like with these look like horse legs, but like if you anatomize them, they don't end up looking like that too much. And people's legs do hyper extend like that, you know? So we're going to do something like a little bit in that vein where we can push things and pull things. So instead of drawing his chest straight like this, we got like a bit of a three quarters on this. So like, why don't we like play with that three quarters? Take your center line and instead of going straight down, I'm gonna go in and out, which would actually like pushes his waist out a little bit. And one thing I like to do, uh, it's just a personal thing. I like to make like abs a little less like perfectly symmetrical. Like I like to like kind of break them up because it just kind of gives them like a, a nice natural like almost like more jacked feeling as opposed to like it looks like batman armor and sort of that sort of stuff so and if that's the look you want to go for it that's how you achieve it by making it totally symmetrical but if it's not the look that you're going for that's how you break it by just like making imbalances like where we can so first super small thing we did was we just popped in and we popped out and then as a result our pelvis is now like here and then from there why don't we try that thing, like I said, about like the hyperextension sort of, where instead of the legs just coming straight, which I guess is a general direction, we can bring it back and come do something like that. You know? And you know, that, that looks like a pretty straight leg, doesn't it? But like, if you saw how I did it, I went in and I went out, and that looks like a horse leg, right? But like, it's just about how you end up like anatomizing it. Like there are different things you can do to it. So we're going to do that and use that kind of like our perspective and go do the other leg. So yeah, and I'm just going to just take the whole drawing and shift it a little bit. There we go. So not different feel, but definitely drawn differently, right? And I think yes. the rest of this is working pretty nice. I'd probably like just size up the hands just a little bit, just because of how we ended up like rebalancing his legs. And then, um, yeah, and even like for yours, like uh, I would probably just pop this out a little bit and then pop it back in. Almost like he's like, it looks like he's ready. It feels like he's more like ready to like do something as opposed to like he's he's posing he's posing for like a photo you know and but what this is what's cool is like we just pop that a little bit now look what we have we have your original arm that's actually popped in a little bit which creates like that little bit of an imbalance in the pose which is nice 
so it's like it's almost like he's holding that ready to start using it you know and these like little like tricks like you can, you can call them whatever you want but like these are like little elements you add to your drawings to like make a certain feel come to like the person looking so now like i have a goku who's ready to be the destroyer like to actually get in the action instead of like i had a candid photo of what we were doing and then honestly like you have like some really great stuff going on like i know you know what you're doing with your anatomy so i'm not really gonna uh, like comment on that i like how you colored it i like i like your ideas like everything's really cool so if you're ever going to do like a static pose uh i wouldn't call this static as in it's boring static means just like not in dynamic and mo moving right um right, this right. could be a little bit this could be like a way that you can add like a little bit of life to like something like that and i don't typically skew too much but like just because we did this this way i'm gonna skew this just a little bit um this way there not a big deal but yeah what do you think i i love it man you know i'm glad you shared me a really good tip what well, i can improve with this artwork yeah, man. especially making it into like a pose a fighting pose this is just making it look straight and you know it's like a fighting pose without it being a pose you know you're not like posing right. for camera you're not posing like here's an action pose for you like you're you're just adjusting a little bit body language to show like oh this something's gonna happen next and that's like what animators do a lot mm -hmm. like they have to think about in one drawing what they can deliver in motion and like acting all this sort of good stuff but you know if you pause any animation at one point you can usually feel like some form of motion in it you know what i mean but then sometimes when you look at comics you don't get that you're like hey why why doesn't it feel like it's mo in motion here even though it's an action pose and that's exactly why like it's an action pose it's not a pose caught in action does, does that make sense? Like an action pose is you posing for a camera. This is what happens when you do an action pose. But a pose caught in action is a snapshot of a moment. That's Usain Bolt, the Usain Bolt running. That's Goku throwing a punch. Like That's all that stuff. And if you start thinking a little bit like, uh, like an animator thinks about like what's before and what's after, it'll lead to like a lot of like nice little tips in your actual line art that'll just make you feel like you're adding motion to things without people even noticing it. Like subtle things like this little arm bent here that's that's a big deal and balancing it by doing that this little stomach bend but then the legs coming out this way like yeah these are use these tools to your benefit so um i won't say too much on that like i think we're we're good on that one so i'll send this to you in a bit thank you yeah okay so we got one more here and Oh, so I, I do want to just showcase Luke Thompson's one. He's not here, but he did this Kamehameha one, which is pretty cool. I'll, I'll do a quick draw over on this a little later and give it an explanation. But uh, let's start with uh, our second last one, which is Jaheem's one. So Jaheem, you want to describe a little bit what's going on here? It's very clear, but like it'd be nice in your own words. Uh, all right. So basically, I was trying to... Um, I recently was re-watching Dragon Ball Z, and... Um, I remember seeing the, the moment, um, in your vi video, when you looked at it, you saw it as Goku powering up. Um, but what I was actually going for was, it was supposed to be the moment Goku was screaming while Namek was about to blow up. Oh, and I know this pose. I remember it. Yeah. He screams in the air and then the light yeah. takes over. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's why you got and the light in there too. Yeah. And I was trying to, um, um, cap capture that while having... While having him sort of about to transform out of anger, mm -hmm. and having the and having his transformation in the background, um, I'm showing what what he would turn into, or showing his his rage. Yeah, man. By having, by having his his form screaming too. Cool. So and, like, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and the way I the way I drew like the type of style, I wanted to make it look like as if it came came out in in the '90s, trying to capture the same style of your animation. Cool man. Which why, which why I made some of the colors. Um, tried to make 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 him make it just feel kind of grainy and stuff. All that stuff. Nice. Okay, so yours, I think, I already know what I want to do to it. So I want to start by asking you a question. When you look at this picture, say Goku's pose here in the center. Yeah. What do you think is the essence of his pose? And by that I mean, what is the most important part of in his pose? And what is the most important part that's selling the pose? Selling that Frieza moment on Namek where it blows up. 
selling the pain and the anguish and the anger that he has. Is there a single thing that you can think of in that pose that makes it feel like that and not like something else? I would say his mouth. Wrong. <laughs> I'll give you one more ah. one more chance. You're drawing, remember that. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> That's <was> lame. <laughs> um it's this? No. The what makes the pose happen and feel that energetic and stressed out is his chest. It's I because I, I want to say chest too. Oh, you should have said chest and you screwed it up. All right, so let's uh, think about why it's his chest. Like, all of us, let's act this out for a second. If you had to do this pose, what do you do? Yeah, Dan, you can laugh at me all that you want, but this is what animators do all day. They get out of their seat and they pose and they get back in. They get out of the seat, pose, and get back in. They look like dorks at work, and this is why their work shows up so good. So we're all going to do this right now. So, uh, yeah, just think about it. If you're in your seat, even if you're not even get up, what, like what, what do you have to do to sell that pose? You gotta arc your back. You gotta pop your chest out. You gotta squeeze your yeah. arms in. You gotta do all that stuff. But all that energy comes right to the chest. All the right. squeezing of your teres muscles and like your back and everything. It all flexes your chest. So the essence of this pose is actually your chest. So I'm actually just gonna blow up your drawing here a bit. And I just care about that one part here. Because I think it'll lead you to a lot if we just do that. All right, let's just make sure our canvas is nice and big. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, I mentioned in another drawing that I didn't want to start with the face. It was on Alex's drawing. Because everyone wants to just go look at the face. But you know, if you start other places, like say an elbow, I'm just going to start a drawing at an elbow really quickly on the side here. You can get like a lot of cool stuff and it'll, it'll figure out for you the, the most important parts that aren't the face. To be honest, the face isn't the most important part. It's just the part we like to look at the most. But you know, like, you don't have to start a drawing at a face uh, for it to be good. And definitely, if you start at the face, there's a high likelihood it may not be good because you spend so much time on the face that it, I call it like the gyroscopic pin. And I'll, I'll try to do it on purpose. This is actually a bad example because I know this one would still turn out kind of organic. But let's uh, just turn that off for a second. Uh, you ever do like this thing where like you're trying to draw like a face? And then... You're like, oh wait, what, what's the rest of the pose? Is it this? Is it that? Is it, like, you know what I mean? Like, it could be anything, but it's because I started with this face, I'm stuck. It's like taking a tack and putting it right in this character's head and saying, now I have to draw the rest of this body. Nothing can mm -hmm. happen to this body. Like, maybe there's a few options you have. I gave you three there, but the face will always be doing that. And you, you know why? It's because that's where we're looking. No matter how you crop this drawing, people are always going to want to look at that face if the drawing is about the character. If it's about anything else, they're not interested in the face. Mostly. They're interested in other things. So with a pose like that, this is about his body language and like what he's going to be like led to do. Like There's like a lot of like menacing uh, elements to it uh, that could really make that drawing sing. The face is already like, it's almost not even shown. So it's like, it's inconsequential if I started with the face. Why would I start with so much time on something that's only like 10% of my drawing? So we're gonna do, we're gonna take that idea of not pinning the face and we're gonna start with the chest. So first thing is, I know your head's gonna be here and I know that's the iconic Goku pose where he screams, you see his mouth like that, you don't get to see his eyes, you see his bangs and his hair and all that stuff. So we're gonna assume that we're just gonna keep your drawing like that at one point. So I'm just gonna start with the chest by popping up the chest like this. I think you can already see it. Gohan, Super Saiyan 2, transformation against Cell. Yep. You know, and how, how iconic is that pose? You already know it. I didn't have to even describe it further than that. And it's because he leads with the chest, you know? So uh, that's one thing you can think of. So 
keeping all your other stuff mostly the same. Like maybe I'll change the angle on the fist a little bit, like re reviving that little fist note about like um, how we don't want like the, the wrist to break. Maybe I'll actually bring this hand like this, a little bit more foreshortened. And then I remember Goku's legs being out like that. And you do have mostly it, but I'm just going to bend some of the elements. So you have a bit of a bend in that leg. I'm just going to bend it a little bit more. You have a bit of a bend in that foot. I'm just going to bend it a little bit more. And same deal here. Add like a little bit of foreshortening to it too. And then just like on Dan's drawing, we had uh, some like atmosphere stuff. So like if there's like a lot of energy, maybe like his, his cloth is floating with this front part. Maybe the gi that's ripped is actually kind of like playing a little mm -hmm. bit more of a part here too. He had a tail, right? So maybe we can like use like some of that tail in here. And then look, we already got this far in the drawing. We didn't even draw the face yet. And already the drawing looks, it's awesome. I think, you know, like and that just goes to show like how important is the face really in this drawing. And Dancer's like mostly not even at all. I mean, what he's doing is important. He's screaming, but the scream isn't just your face and your mouth. It's like what you're doing with the rest of your body, right? So let's uh, go get something like what you had here, like mostly nose. You had like screaming like that. I'm just gonna go a little bit more like, you have his like teeth like this, which kind of looks like I'm looking at it head on. So what I'm actually doing to your teeth is I'm actually just adding a little bit of dimension so it looks like we're looking up at the teeth, you know? So let's just redraw that because you had the spiky ones. I'm gonna drop this ear a little bit. And then I like how you did the hair. I'm just gonna be like a little bit more wild with it. So like super small things, like I'd probably just draw that like that. I wouldn't wanna repeat the shape, so I'd probably just do that there. Like kinda of continue what you got going on here. And so you got one going up, one going up. I'm gonna reverse the other one going down. These are really small things, but they're adding like a little bit of like life and motion to the drawing, you know what I mean? And I know it's super loose, but if you really want to. I like that you did like your lightning and stuff, but do you remember that scene? The planet blows up, it's actually underlit. So why don't we just try something like that? Let's just add like a global shadow layer here. Really nice and loose. Don't have to be too clinical with it. And then start like erasing back a little bit to show like some underlighting. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> now I know this looks obviously the end result is quite a bit different but remember they happen in small stages right like let's just review what we did let's look what we started with and then where we ended up so we have the iconic pose you claim that the mouth was the most important part how dare you and now we just went from there and just went right to the chest. We added a bend in the chest and to offset it, we added a, a reverse bend in the pelvis. We pulled the elbows in a little bit just to really squeeze the muscles more. As a result, we also tried to use some foreshortening and on this side. We added a tail in, went with your hair the way it is mostly, but just made really small tweaks to shape design. And then we're left with something like this. So. And then I added some like underlighting. So it's kind of like a before and an after. But yeah, you feel like that's helpful? Yeah, it's extremely helpful. Okay, good. Okay, so this Zoom call again is about to end in like a minute. We got a half an hour left in our session today, so I'm just gonna send you guys one more link and then we're gonna look at that last drawing, okay? All right. So let me dissolve this call, BRB. Okay, um, oh yeah.
gonna send them the link. Just bear with me for a moment. Well, just give me a chance to read some of the stuff in the chat that I can actually read. Somebody asks, Esoteric asks, if you're really good at gesture drawing, are you pretty much going to be good at animating? Uh, that's a good uh, observation. I wouldn't say it'll make you good at animating because there's a lot of things that happen in animation that aren't based off of how good you are at drawing. Like there's a sense of timing that has to be developed, spacing, acting, uh, a lot of stuff. But gestures, being good at gestures will definitely get you good at drawing faster though. So that's a really good question. Uh, and you need you need to be good at them. Very, very good at them. Um, yeah. Oh, David V does in the house. Um, yeah, I'm glad you can uh, listen to some of like the thought process that goes into this. Ho hopefully it's helpful. Merlin says, I can't believe I learned something today. Good, good. <laughs> That's what we want. Esoteric says, I see I've practiced a lot of gesture and illustration, but looks like I'll have to start from the bottom to learn animation. Yeah, I think being good at drawing and being good at animating is two different things, which sounds strange. Like you have to be good at both, but being a good illustrator or good at portraits and or design, it doesn't mean your sense of motion and acting is good. Animation is dependent on motion and acting, but you also happen to have to be really good at drawing to be able to do it competently. So uh, learning about acting, I mean, you don't have to be good at drawing to do that. There are a lot of 3D animators who can't really draw very well, but they can 3D animate like crazy because they just know the nuances of what happens to a face, your body language and all this sort of stuff. But, um, and like, yeah, similarly, there are some people who are really good at drawing, but they don't know how to act. So it doesn't really benefit their animation skills. For them, their, their challenge is just like the technical aspects of animation as opposed to learning how to draw. Most students, and I think Jaheem, you said you're trying to get to animation school at Seneca. Um, most students who get into animation, like it's very important to have accuracy, like a high level of accuracy right at the beginning. But um, yeah, that I mean, you also have to have a lot of fun and energy. You have to really like what you're doing. So it's not just about accuracy. Um, so uh, I'll go grab. Uh, one more drawing, which is Luke Thompson's. I want to answer one more question. It says, what is it like to work in an animation studio? Is it very taxing when you work on a project for a long time? I think for anyone, whether they're a musician or they work in a restaurant or whatever, like if you're working on one thing for a long time or one task for a long time, it'll always get really draining at one point. Uh, animation is no different from that. Uh, there is definitely a factory mentality to some of it where it's just about pumping out shots, getting your amount of seconds done in a week and listening to notes, doing your thing. Like, um, And at one point it may just feel like, like, why are they asking me to do it? Just hire someone else to do it. But, um, you know, like every, every job, like if you're going to do it well, like it has some sort of level of that, some sort of level of, I just don't feel like doing it. Or can they just get someone else to do it? Or can I just like, can I just, can I just, can I just, but um, don't think that goes away when you're an animator or a comic artist and stuff like you're going to constantly be working for other people and thinking, I want to work for myself. I want to do the things I want to draw, not just working on some kid's show or this or that, because it's not always just the project you want to be on. Right. Um, it's nice when you get a nice project, but that's about uh, all I have to say on that. But I'm going to get back to this. So we got everyone back in the chat, uh, Dan, Jaheem, Alex and uh, Sean. So I'm going to look at Luke Thompson's drawing here. So he's got like a really cool Kamehameha pose. So I'm actually, for him, I'm going to treat it like I wanted a scene. I gave him a storyboard that was Kamehameha. He looked at the storyboard, gave me this back, and I'm going to say, nope, I want something different. And I'm going to give him like a director's note. Say, hey, do it this way, which is going to be a really loose drawing, but this happens in animation studios too. You get loose ones, you get tight ones. You get written notes, you get... Someone just give you a call. So you have to be able to deal with all these sorts of stuff to just even get a scene done, you know? So, um, yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. Let me just read one thing real quick. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, 
Okay, cool. So I'm just going to jump into this. Um, yeah, so I'm going to act this out myself. I'm just going to bring my, my, what do you call it? My, what the hell are we using? Zoom. <laughs> I'm just going to bring my zoom here for a second. Uh, pin myself so people can see this. So you have to think about like really realistically like what's happening. Like is something like this enough? And if I say like, nope, wasn't good enough. I need something that has more energy. And you say, well, I gave you more energy. That's that's the best I can do. I'll tell you, okay, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to make sure Goku's eye line, when he's looking at the camera, is exactly where I want it. You're gonna have to make sure his shoulder is where I want it. You're gonna have to make sure his hands are doing exactly what I want. You're gonna have to make sure his stomach is crunched the way I want. These are the little elements of your body and in acting and in, they build up, they build up like crazy and they, they'll lead you to like a single drawing that'll, you know, do a lot for you instead of just having to watch the entire scene. So I'm going to keep that in mind and I'm going to do this pose. So this pose, however, is dependent on Goku's gaze. He's making eye contact with the camera. So we are going to start with that. And I know I drew it like that, but just imagine his eyes are here. Okay, so what I said is I want to add a little bit more twist in this body. I'm going to put his shoulder here. I like where his hands are, so I'm going to try to preserve some of that. I'm going to change the angle a little bit. I'm going to make it something a little bit more like this. Uh, people can't see what I'm acting out, but in my Zoom call they can. And this is a, a moment when you mm. act out stuff like this that are a little complex, especially with hands. This is where you want to be able to like, hey, like I need a mirror for a second. You just want to stand in front of a mirror. So I'm uh, going to use my Zoom call as a mirror for a second, thinking what my left hand is doing and what my right hand is doing, where my thumb is going and where the rest of the hand is. And then the other one was like this. Mm. Yeah, a little high, so I'm just going to redraw that. So a good thing to do like when you do like notes for someone is like you don't want to dedicate too much time to like unnecessary details. This is about me just like finding out if things in the right place. Now it's in the right place. Now I can say, okay, this finger doesn't look like how I want it. I just do something like that. This finger doesn't look like how I want it. I can do something like that. And now I got I got the drawing working for me instead of me just running in circles. Come here. And you gotta talk when you draw, dude. Come here. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. I'm just gonna hold the ha, ha until I'm done this drawing. <laughs> okay, so, and I said I wanted a little bit of a flex in his stomach, a little crunch there, because he's holding in all that pressure. So we're gonna get like something like that. Then, you know. With all this atmosphere stuff like this, give me a higher energy charge scene. I'm gonna like play with like his clothes too, let them kind of like fly all over the place, kind of like how are you doing on Akuma's? Put that tail mm. in the foreground, like it came off camera and then went back in. Spread those legs because he's got a wide Ryu stance here. get a bit of these gums in here to really just make it feel like more angry.
めえ<笑> And we haven't even put the beam in there yet, so you know, just for illustration sake, let's just do this. We will make this nice and dark. This will multiply. Then. Try not to obscure Goku's face too much with effects because this is still about how he's looking at the camera. Then maybe we can just add like a little bit of lighting to this. I like since everything's so dark right now, we can just kind of like lasso it out to give us a nice little base. Mm -hmm. There's no touches, man. Oh, wrong layer. Uh, sorry, I I didn't catch what you said. What did you say? But I was just saying, it's just those little touches that just make the biggest difference. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then for fun, we're just gonna add like a little flat to Goku so you can actually see where he is. By the way, notes don't usually get like this detail. Like people don't like do flats for you and stuff like that. But we got all the time we want, so we do whatever we want. Mm. So Luke Thompson, your scene is due by 6 p.m. Get it in. <laughs> there it is. So yeah, that's how I would do it. Um, essence is the same. Eye contact is the same. Kamehameha is on the right side of the screen, which is the left side of the screen. And um, yeah, I just took like micro instances of it by like bending certain things, by raising certain things. And uh, that's what will get us to that spot. So that's it. Uh, we did that in a record time, which is good. So um, yeah, uh, people in our call right now, do you guys have any questions about kind of like the process or like anything that we did that you wanted a little bit more clarity on? Um, I think understood everything. Cool. Yeah, I think you explained everything very well. Uh, I understood everything, so. Okay, awesome. I got the notes here. You know, uh, Sean uh, sent me some stuff earlier. He's using uh, he's some of his other art for a portfolio, and he wanted me to like look at it. If uh, you're comfortable, Sean, we could show some of it on stream, and we can just like kind of give each other some feedback. Not each other some feedback. I want to give you feedback, and I want to hear what you think about that. Uh, would you want to? Yes. Yes. That's okay. Great. Cool. Thank so, you very much. Uh, let me just quickly download the ones he had. So Sean provided me with four shots. I'm just gonna get these from him real quick. Oops. Download. Cool. So while I'm getting them, do you want to explain to me what your portfolio is for and who you plan to send it to? Uh, at the moment of this time, right now, I am doing a freelance for Mirror Arts in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. 
in Chinatown, where the Crane Building. Mm -hmm. So after I finish this freelance, I'm, I'm gonna have to do my research um, for me to understand what, co what company I wanna work for, because I wanna do like a character designs, creature designs, because I understand that the most than doing environment designs. Yeah. So I spend like a lot of years, a lot of hours doing that. Like I understand how to do environment designs um, in college when I was practicing, like doing like 3D modeling and then making that into a concept art. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel more comfortable to do that the most um, when it comes to character designs. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm doing like fan art to um, showcase my art on social media. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I have an art station account in uh, Instagram. So I just started Instagram because I, I, I feel ready to um, showcase showcase people around the world um, what kind of art that I love to do for a little bit. Yeah, okay, so this is good. So you have a personal goal there and you have a professional goal there. So that's nice. And yeah, you, you kind of got your foot in the right area. So let's look at uh, the stuff that you sent me. I'm just gonna share it here on the stream. So Sean gave me five, uh, four pieces. So he gave me this cool Evangelion one, which is pretty awesome, very postery. Got the, the Goku one that we're looking at, but it's gotten a little bit more intense with the atmospheric uh, effects. Got this, uh, I forgot this guy's name. He was like that, he has like his hands in his pockets all the time. What's his name? Speed? Oh, yeah. Uh, hit. hit hit speed <laughs> yeah so you got a, a hit drawing um and then you got a contrasting super saiyan 4 goku drawing okay so i'll tell you what's good about your portfolio you have a good consistency with what you're doing you're really wild with your colors but it's controlled to a good degree and um if you're going for poster art like this is it like this is how you get into poster art you try to like okay. use your effects to your advantage. You try to be clever with your posing and like scale with like background elements versus foreground elements, which is really cool. Um, now to give you like a more like focused version of a critique is uh, know if it's on a professional level, you have to know who, the type of client you want to work for. So if you're trying to work for like a game studio, you have to see the type of work that they make or that they're likely to make and whether your portfolio illustrates that you're the type of artist that is going to be able to make that sort of work you know sometimes it requires you to actually make custom work for a portfolio submission so that you can show that oh i can do more for you it's not just what i do on a personal level i can i can do more for you so that's something you're gonna to have to be cognizant of the other thing is i think you um what's good is like you know what you want to do like socially i guess like through your instagram like so what you're showing me here is your personal flavor and for like, you know, people talk about employability and stuff like that. Um, become a jack of all trades, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I don't really think about the jack of all trades stuff. I think about being a master at one thing because to be really good at that thing, you have to learn everything else anyway. You know, like if you want to be a good animator, you have to be able to ground your characters, which means you have to have a good idea of perspective, which also <laughs> means you have to have a good idea of life drawing. To be a good animator, you have to be a good actor. To be a good animator, you have to have good shapes. To be good at character design, to be a good animator, you have to do so many things, right? So, yeah, and a lot of other things are like that too. To be a good comic artist, you can't just draw pretty faces and like beautiful women and big muscular men. Like, you have to be the whole package. And this is why a lot of comics people look at the cover. It's, yes, they open it, ugh, and they throw it away, right? <laughs> so, um, so that's something you want to think be about. Happy to hear your thoughts and your honesty and. I'm able to learn something new from you. And that's why I wanted to be part of your Zoom meeting because I had a feeling this what this is what this Zoom call is really all about. So I really thank you for sharing me that. No, I I appreciate that you're you're able to spend the time with us here tonight. And for anyone else in this call, because like uh, you guys have already introduced yourself, you tell me what your ambitions are. Like these are the kinds of things you gotta think about, like when you get into the professional world, like who are the type of clientele you wanna bring in and are you showing them through your work? on a personal level that I can do what you need for me to do professionally. And if you can't, if you think you're good enough to do it, but you just don't have the examples of it, just brush up on what they do and just try to make a portfolio that'll at, like really capture their attention. And truthfully, if like, say it's like one or two studios, there's probably a good handful of other studios that look for the same thing. And then if you're like, if you get a few catches, most misses, you can have to start thinking about, okay, well, 
that area is not working. Where else can I like um, push my skills? Like what other sort of clientele can I draw, draw in? And it usually comes down to is the ability sh being shown in the drawings? Am I marketing it properly? And is it inspiring my client? What I make is what they want to make. So, uh, and sometimes people say it's just a matter of time. And sometimes it is. Sometimes productions are just full. They don't need more people. Sometimes they're desperate for people. They just keep asking who's ready, who's ready. So, um, yeah, you know what you want to do. Um, so the overall um, advice there is just know what you want to do on a personal level and what you want to do on a professional level. And if they're the same, you only have one thing to be developing. If they're not the same, you have two things to develop. So think about it like that. I will write that down. Thank you. <laughs> you won't need it written, but I'm, I'm glad you're thinking about that. And I think the rest of us here tonight, like uh, Daniel, I know what type of drawings you do. Uh, Alex, you're telling me what you want to be doing. Um, Jaheem, looking to get into animation school, like this advice will apply to all of you too. So uh, just right now, focus on accuracy, getting really good at your fundamentals, but make sure you make time for fun. It can't just be study. It can't just be, you know, trying to become a master at what you're doing. You have to also have, have like a lot of fun or else your your skills will end up diminishing. So, um, yeah, mm. there's not too much to say about that. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you for joining me tonight. So I'm going to, I'll send, if you guys want like like a flattened drawing of like what we did today, I'll, I'll send you back over email. And uh, to anyone listening over YouTube and that sort of stuff, um, this is something like I I think I want to do more of. I don't know how consistently we'll be doing it in the next coming months or whatever it is, but uh, we'll get time to do it. And um, yeah, if this is something you like, just it would be worth like leaving a comment on YouTube saying, hey, this this is like useful to me. Maybe you can do some more of these. Uh, and if you have ideas too, like, I mean, I'll listen to them, but I'll read them. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hope this was useful. But uh, for tonight, I guess we'll... <laughs> Very good. interesting. Good, good. Do the rest yeah. of you feel like that? Yeah, I've been a lot today. Good, you better. Okay, so, um, yeah, until the next one. So, um, I'll get in touch with you guys afterwards. And to anyone watching tonight, thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to be out of here. And uh, you guys just stay on the Zoom call for just a bit more. But to everyone in the stream, thank you and uh, good night. Thanks for watching, everyone.